When starting a town or city, you stand in front of an empty canvas and often just don't know what to do. In this video, I want to give you some examples of how to make a functional and interesting town layout while starting my own medieval city in survival Minecraft. And to break things up, I also did some work on my starter base. Ah, oh, this shovel. <laughs> Hello, welcome. Welcome to another episode of Realm Construct and uh, this shovel is driving me insane. Well, how did I even get this shovel? Uh, this horrible, horrible efficiency 3 shovel. Well, first I went diamond mining, then I bred up some cows and grew some sugarcane, and then I made a little enchanting cave because I, I absolutely love enchanting caves. I don't know what it is, but I kind of always make an enchanting cave. Uh, yeah, it's just a thing. And of course, then I enchanted the shovel. And for some reason, I only had efficiency free available. And here we are. Here we are. It's it's just not insta mining grass and does insta mine dirt. It's ah, uh, I don't I don't even know. But we have twenty nine levels. Let me let me try one thing. Let me try this. Let's disenchant this dot enchant. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't do much. Disenchant the shovel. Oh wait, I don't get the XP. Oh yes, I did. Okay, good, <laughs> good. Okay, uh, half a level. So this means we have to go mining. Uh, I don't particularly like this. We just have to do some mining. Nothing special. Nothing fancy. Just just some mining. We won't die. Okay. Nothing to worry about. Oh no, it's a mending pickaxe. Level 30, there we go. Okay, so let's get back. Let's try this again. Efficiency free, why? Efficiency four, unbreaking three, but fortune three as well. <laughs> I don't need that on a shovel, that's horrible. Okay, I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna take that. It's okay. <laughs> we can finally start with grinding. This will be fun. Oh, this is this is much better. Actually, this is a lot of fun. Yep, I can do this all day. And there we are. Okay, so this is the flat area that we wanted. And what I've got here is the layout of the river, which should flow through this area. I think uh, this has to be a little bit wider. The island in the middle should be pretty large uh, because there should be like the governmental buildings and all of that on the island. So uh, yeah. Should be a little bit larger than that, maybe. So we'll see. But for now, this was enough grind for me. I won't do the river right now. Um, I will do some decorations for the farmhouse and the temple. Just bring the area a little bit more together, as we said in the last episode. So this will get some further detail and the temple will get some decorations. And I will build a shed right there. Uh, I think. <laughs> or there? I don't know. Uh, but yeah. Okay, see any difference? Well, uh, there's some vegetation growing on top of the roof, and also we've got some mossy cobblestone, uh, no, not mossy cobblestone, mossy stone bricks here to just help that. Also, this house is more worn down now, as you can see. There's some more decoration here, but the most important part is this pathway that leads to this shed, which is currently empty. <laughs> so we've got another element of the left building on the right, and we've got something from this building spreading to this one, so that all makes it feel much more united. So I really like those little changes. 
And yeah, they are they are minor, they are small, but I think they do a lot. And if we just scoop around the outside here, you can see that I also decorated this area. We've got some poop <laughs> and some hay. I would love to add some more decoration to this. And also like the red nether brick is still missing. <laughs> So yeah, we're still not done. Still not done with this build. Uh, yeah. So, no! Why? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, as so, a little bonus, uh, I also made something back here. A little fallen tree bridge. I don't know. It's just a log that's... that's yeah, it's just a log. And yeah, I like this. And a little pathway to this cave area, which I also improved a little bit. Uh, so yeah, now it's time to go to sleep. And also, I told you last episode that we will visit the other towns. And that's exactly what we're going to do now. Because now we will be talking about how to do the layout. The layout of this city and uh i i don't know i got some more food for the travels and with the layout of the town i i mean i'm no stranger to to town layouts i've made some in the past but at the same time this one is kind of special and also i don't know it's always such a hard thing to do but what i'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna look at the other towns, look at what I like about town layout and what things I don't like and what things I'm going to do differently. So for you, maybe the layouts of those towns may be a lot more fitting than the layout I'm making today because, well, I'm making something special today. As I said, it can go, it can go wrong. <laughs> Oh, yeah, we are approaching the town of Lindana. You can already see it. Yes, there we go. Well, let's, let's just see the town layout. So this town is not finished. It's very much a work in progress. But you can see that the main roads leading into the town come through this tunnel right there. Uh, lead to the main square. And then we've got another main road on the sea following the coastline until it doesn't because there will be a harbor and the main road will lead in this direction and at some point will connect to Remia to the town we are building right now. There's some minor roads as well like these connecting to the main road out there. Then we've got another one right behind those buildings. And we've got this tiny road for the outskirts of the town. Uh, the outskirts will reach all the way to there some, somewhere. So the, the town sneaks along the coastline. So that's the main feature of it. And that's how the town is laid out. So what I really like about this layout is that we have this main square, this wonderful little main square which feels really closed in even though not all of the houses that make it feel closed in are built already what's also interesting is that there are elevation changes and that's something i think is really important but for our town we have flattened a lot of terrain but we'll still have some elevation changes as the town will extend outwards <laughs> let's let's continue in this direction to the first town of this world which is called the Sea, and it's our elven town oh and there we already see it there's a little path going up from here and this is the first part of town which is okay uh, this is the first part of town which is on a little bit of a higher elevation the main part of the town is actually down below, just on a single main square harbor area. So if we go down here, 
<laughs> just all around the houses. We find the main square and the harbor area as one thing. It's also a marketplace. And there we've got all the other houses. And what's special about this town layout is there's this open kind of main square with the market and all the houses just facing the ocean, which is kind of nice. And there are just two pathways leading to and from the main square. One is just this tiny one that leads up to the elevated section right there. And one where we just came from, which leads all the way around the houses. So this town is really small. And to be honest, there's not much of a layout here. It's just basically a huge circle at this point. But what I really like is the fact that we have this connection to the sea, that we have much more of an elevation change than in the previous town, actually, and have, uh, I don't know, I, I like this way up here also. These towns are very organic. The pathways are winding around buildings, winding around landscapes and everything like that. But the new town will be very, very different in the sense that there are some organic parts of town where roads are like this. But there are also the parts of town which are really well planned and therefore are in a grid pattern. And... By the way, have I told you that? We will have canals. We will have a city with canals, with a river island and a street grid. So yeah, <laughs> that will be interesting. So let's walk back to Remia, or what will be Remia. Start digging the river and the canals to then see where to place all the streets and roads. Okay, this is our mountain, there we go, there we go. So okay, now I will be rearranging this river a little bit, and then, uh, yeah, we'll just start, I guess. So here we are, I have marked the canals with some diorite, as you can see, just to differentiate between them and the rivers. Then I added some dirt to represent a governmental building, probably the town hall. And I did some dotted lines with granite uh, to mark out the main square, which is in this case really a square. So in the center of it, there's this canal and you can see through there. So it's closed and open at the same time, which draws from both the main squares of the other towns. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take Netherrack and I'm going to mark out the main roads of the town, uh, which I'm going to do like this. So I'm not sinking them in like I did with the granite right there, because that's easier to change. If I want to change the path, I can just do that. And that would be a lot easier than replacing it again in the ground and all of that stuff. We're going to have main roads with netherrack, city streets with cobblestone, and little alleyways with andesite. Yes. I mean, there's not much contrast between cobblestone and andesite, but uh, it's enough for me to differentiate. And it's more important for me that I have a lot of those blocks than uh, to have a very different color. Even though having a very different color, if you have the blocks, do it, okay? So colored wool would be the best option here, or colored concrete, stuff like that. We have this amazing central island and this will be the old town of the city and here on this hill like the streets will be more curved and here will be some towers or city walls things like that maybe on this side i think the street layout might be just very chaotic 
Because like this area might have been constructed in a time of collapse for the kingdom. As opposed to this part of town, which probably is a little bit older than this part of town. Because it's a lot easier to go into a flat area. They also could extend the canals, the canal network. We will have some very, very strict street grids right there. And where the town leads to the outskirts again, um, the street grid will get more, well, not for what true. So, this might look like a mess to you, but for me, I think I know what I mean by those blocks. And that's what you will discover as well. As you place the blocks, the city layout just comes naturally to you. It, it just starts to make sense, you know? In general, in this city, uh, the roads and streets just follow the waterways, so... So most of them are right on the canals, on the river. Then we've got some main roads cutting through, meeting in the town center and going towards the harbor area and in different directions outwards. As you can see, I left out some parts of town where I didn't add in some streets and alleyways. That's just because I don't know yet. and. Maybe you should also leave some parts out of your plans because, well, your plans can change. Some things uh, you might need to rearrange and uh, it's probably not a good idea to plan everything completely from the beginning. So yeah. Now for completing this episode, I can choose one tool, a stack of items or access to a farm and... I mean, I don't think that this time it's hard for me, because I want to fly, which means I will take the elytra next episode. Wait, what? <laughs> yes, I will take access to a mob farm in the Seha to get gunpowder for flying. <laughs> So, if you liked this episode, I am sure you will like the others as well. So here's the playlist. 